this hard plastic light up staff. This is for fun. <laughs> there's no good. I was going to give you some reason, but there's no other reason. It's uh, close to the holidays, a couple days of Christmas, and I've got a red light up staff. It's high impact PVC. It's very durable and it's fun to train with. It's a little bit heavier than most staffs. So I'm going to use this one for most of the warm up. I'm going to show you some things that you can do. Grab your staff. We're going to get started right away with this basic spin going from side to side. From here, you're just trying to strengthen the grip, strengthen the forearm, get the blood flowing into the joints, stay safe from work or injury during this workout. Just back and forth. That's all that is. It's nothing special. Just a simple move that you should do every single time so you can stay safe. How to train both staff at home during the quarantine, during the shutdown. Some of you guys have been shut down for months. I talked to Sensei Emmett. He's got a channel here on YouTube, Sensei Emmett. Follow him. He's got some great interviews, great conversations with highly experienced martial arts instructors, masters, gym owners from all over the world. Go check out his site if you haven't done so already. But he and I were talking. He's in Ireland. He's been shut down since March. And I thought, since March? Meaning he can't go to his martial arts school and teach classes since March. Good morning. It's good to see you. Go back and forth and then start to go hand to hand. The warm up's always important. The warm up is also strengthening building power, especially with a heavier staff. This is a heavy staff. And again, like I said, there's no good reason for me to use this hard plastic light up staff, except that it's fun. It's a little bit bigger in diameter than the other staff that I use. So it's going to give my hand a workout. Variation in training is very important. If you have a thin staff one day, the next day, use a thicker staff. If you have it, if not, if you only have one, use that one. But in this case, it's thicker and it's heavier, so it's going to build more muscle. It's going to make a stronger grip for me. And I haven't used this one in a while, so it's good to mix it up, train it up, or challenge it. Challenge my body, get out of my comfort zone. You only grow when you're out of your comfort zone. Then, after you've done those warm-up, I want you to go into your figure eight. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Keep that other hand up. Once you're warmed up, though, really speed it up. Push yourself out of your comfort zone today. You want to do 30 seconds per exercise. And what I'm doing, leading with the thumb, carving the sideways figure eight, also known as the infinity sign which is behind the name, the other name of this spin, which is an endless spin. You're gonna slowly start to speed it up. A little bit faster. Pull your stomach up and in, abs tight. Turn your shoulders a little bit, your hips a little bit. That's where your speed is gonna come from. After you've done that for 30 seconds, Goes in the other hand, same way, palms up, pinky to pinky. That other foot now comes forward, making your body a smaller target for attack. So when you start to learn how to defend yourself in practical ways with a long stick, a long martial arts staff, whether it's this bow or another style, like a Korean jungbong or the gun or a cudgel, the Chinese styles, Maybe you do wushu staff. And they all have different moves. Maybe it's the Indian salam bomb where your hands come together. Good morning. And you move very quickly. And the salam bomb staff, the Indian long martial arts staff, is much thinner, much lighter than this. But again, you're going to get value out of using a variety when you have it available. Use a variety of things to train. Then, after you do the front on both sides, since this is episode four, good morning, you're going to go to the front and the back. So we're building in this series how to train both staff at home, whether it's during quarantine or lockdown, or, you know, the COVID shut you down and it was COVID-19. And now there's COVID-21. And they're going to keep us shut down indefinitely. They won't. I'm, I'm mostly joking. But my point is, don't let that stop you from improving your life through martial arts training. That's what the Do is in Taekwondo, 
karate do, judo, aikido. The do means the way of improving yourself through this discipline, this training. We should call this bodo. I'm joking. But I'm not. Maybe we do. Maybe we come up with a new name. We call it the bodo. That's too goofy to, that's too goofy to work. Don't start calling it bodo. We have to get something in the middle to make it sound tough and cool. Anyway, I don't know. My mind's getting, getting down that rabbit hole, so we'll pull it back out. Go to the front and the back. Front and the back. This is the same as the one you just did. The figure eight in front of your body. Sliding in and sliding back. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Gradually increase your speed. And then in the other one, good morning, you're going to go into the reverse spin. Now this is also a figure eight or infinity spin, endless spin. The difference is instead of pushing down with your thumb, you're pulling up with the small side of the hand or the pinky side. And you're gonna pull it up and pull it up. Good, welcome. Welcome to the live cast. How to train both staff at home, episode four. Whether you're in COVID lockdown, COVID shutdown, COVID-19, or maybe it's COVID-21, they've skipped a year and they found a new strain, a new reason to go home and stay there. Yeah, use a Joe, especially if you're inside, you have low ceilings. When I'm inside low ceilings, I always use the Joe, I use a shorter staff or use a broomstick. Use, if you have a hard tube from the rapid Christmas wrapping paper, use that, use something. Don't wait to start. Go to the side in the front of the body. This is that reverse figure eight spin. Seems like one side is brighter than the other, doesn't it? And then go into the other one, reverse. It's probably all just camera angles. And then go to the, yeah, perfect. Go get a stick from outside. If it's not straight, use it anyway. If it has one heavy side, one light side, use it anyway. The gun or the bong, the Chinese style sometimes, one side's heavy, one side's lighter. Don't go for perfect, go for getting it done. Go for finished, go for getting started. Take the first step. And then as you move and you go down the path, you start to, garden cane's perfect. Then you start to get better equipment. You'll see more things, they'll come to you. It's just, it matters like they say, yeah, plumbing pipe's fine. Use the, um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. It's the same thing. When the bodo, see I threw it in there. When the bow martial artist is ready, when the long staff, when you start training, invest your time before you invest your money. I did put a link below if you wanna buy one, go to that store. They're very inexpensive. This one, I don't know if they make it anymore, but if you wanna see, I got this Karate Mart years ago. They probably still make it. It's high impact, meaning it won't break when you start to hit it. But it's also very flexible, almost too flexible, almost like the rattan or the bamboo, the Chinese style, which has these two hand grips. I went to work today, I wanna to add into this first part of the session, two-handed spins, and I wanna talk about, I don't know, maybe it's the red uh, double-bladed lightsaber or light staff idea, the Darth Maul. Maybe that's not turned on. No, that's on. Let's see if that one's on. Yeah, it's on. All right, maybe it needs new batteries. Two-handed spin like this, what it really is, it's a series of striking and blocking. I want you to see that. So bring it, this is my left side. You can start on your left or the right, doesn't matter. But whichever hand is up is gonna come down in a striking motion. Think about hitting them to square in the middle of their body, on top of their head. Striking down, or maybe you're hitting their hand. They've got a sword, they've got a knife. They're trying to punch, you're gonna hit straight down, vertical strike. And then this part here is then gonna clear across the body. That is a deflecting, shielding block. Think of a shielding block and then bring it up so that now the left hand is up on the right side of the body and you're going to come down with this one and push. Bring this up, push down. Bring it up. 
Always look in the mirror. Never com they say they say this. Um, comparison is the thief of joy. If you start to compare yourself to somebody else, what you have, what you can do, what you know, compared to what they have, what they can do, what they know, then you'll be miserable all the time. You'll be you'll become that person, a victim. Instead, focus on what you do have and be grateful, gratitude. When you're thankful for what you have, you get more of it. So you just need to start with a tiny little seed of gratitude. I'm thankful there's a strike. There's a strike, block. Bring it around, strike, strike, block. Yeah, this is, this is an oldie but goodie. This is one that sits in the corner, I never use it. But be thankful for what you have, and then you start to get more of it. Now, I'm squared up to you. And squaring up, you're going to be able to do this on both sides. Both sides. I think it was a gift. Down, 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 across. Put one foot in front of the other. From time to time, uh, martial arts supply stores will send me stuff like this. Obviously, they want me to put them in the video, so you'll go and buy them. But um, this, this comes from Karate Mart, karatemart.com. I don't know if they still have it. You can check it out. But if you want just a regular bow, check the link below. You're just going side to side. Ray Park in the movie, uh, I, I don't even know which one has Darth Maul in it. Darth Maul's in the movie, and he, this is one of the basic spins. Don't. Don't ever compare yourself to me. Here's why. My instructor that I trained with the longest, this is no exaggeration and this is not an insult because this is just, you know, that's how he's made by God. And I, and I believe that's it's a good thing. We're all supposed to be different. If we're all the same, how boring is that? Not as tall as me. Literally, not as tall as me. And there were other people who had been training in this school for years and years and years. This is a light staff from KarateMark.com. But... So this instructor, so the school that I spent the most time in, we're going to go into a wrist roll and a wrist roll. And I want to show you the continuous wrist roll today because last night in my rare in-person class, I had a student ask me about a single-handed uh, butterfly spin. Now, this is the butterfly spin, and we'll go over that. Good. Thank you. Episode one. This, this type is called a light staff. So, um, so back to the comparing you to me or me to you or me, you to anybody, right? So Korean man, born in, North, born in North Korea, communists come, they flee to the South because they love freedom. And a light staff, karatemart.com, if you want to look for it. L-I-G-H-T, as in light. So um, karate is K-A-R-A-T-E-M-A-R-T dot C-O-M. Anyway, so, so, so this guy, yeah, light staff, light staff. So he's um, it's Korean, small, uh, probably small because of malnutrition, growing up in a constant or a refugee camp because the communists took everything they had. And by the time he gets to the United States, he picks up different students. One student had polio as a child and half of his body was, he wasn't able to use his arm at all, but tuck in his, his thumb into his belt. And he'd, he'd fight like a dog, man. He was a great fighter. One hand, just kick with that foot. He was very successful in martial arts and in life. Another guy, like 6'6", lanky, uh, same, same situation. Became a great martial artist, very accomplished, high ranking, both of these guys. Another woman, one of the highest ranking women in Germany. First woman to beat a Korean woman way back when in competitive Taekwondo. So all these martial artists were just amazing. Yes, uh, they're real small. I'll show you, in fact. Just a little button there. So these three martial artists, for example, that's the light in there. These three martial artists, all highly accomplished, highly skilled, amazing to watch, 
but not one of them was ever satisfied because they didn't look like this guy who was not five feet tall. He just wasn't. One guy is six foot six, Caucasian. His family is from, uh, uh, they're Jewish. So I, I don't know, they're, uh, Europe. One guy had polio as a child. So half of his body, he's not able to use like the other half. The woman, is, she's a woman, extremely gifted, German, runs multiple schools in Germany now, teaches multiple styles, brilliant woman. All three were brilliant in martial arts, but none of them were happy because they constantly compared themselves to the way that the master, the Korean master moved. And I, I saw it from the start. I thought, I'll never look like him because I'm not built like him. I can look good for me. I can look just as good for me as he looks for him. And you can look just as good for you as I look for me. And you have to understand that. That's why I say not good, not bad, different. Understand, you're not gonna punch like I punch. You're not gonna kick like I kick. You're not gonna spin like I spin. You can spin better. You can spin in a different way. And it's gonna be amazing for you. But let that go. Uh, comparison is the thief of joy. Burn that into your, uh, especially during Christmas. Always think about what you have. Yes, thank you, Sensei Emmett. By the way, if you haven't seen Sensei Emmett's site, please go, when we're done, type in Sensei Emmett, E-M-M-E-T-T. -T. Is it two T's, Emmett? Type in Sensei Emmett, go check out his channel. Subscribe, please, subscribe, help him grow. He's been shut down since March. Since March. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift. I gotta get out of the COVID mentality. We're all, we're all in this together, they say. No, we're not. If you've been shut down since March and the politicians are still getting paid, right? Yeah, compare yourself to yourself. And that's, that's what growth mindset is. Growth mindset is I can't do it yet. Always add the yet. Can't do it yet. Can't do it yet. Don't know yet. Can't afford it yet. Can't, uh, don't have the time yet. But add the yet at the end. Can't do it yet. All right, now, continuous, continuous. Let's do the butterfly spin real quick. So the left hand, pinky up, thumb to the pinky. You're going to turn. Leave this hand here, but pull it back. Turn that hand, palm up. Open the hand and slide the thumbs in. And the fingers, let them wiggle. That'll show you what the butterfly wings are. Pull that hand out of the way. Turn this one down and catch it, pull this out of the way, turn it up and slide it in. There's the head of the butterfly, there are the wings. So this is the butterfly spin. And you can go one direction, you can stop and without taking your hands off, you can then go in the other direction. You can then, if you want, put the bottom hand on the top and change the butterfly spin. But that's a butterfly spin. A one-handed butterfly spin, and this is to, thanks to Tommy. Tommy invented this last night. He said, I think you can do a one-handed butterfly spin. I said, that would mean a butterfly with just one wing and half a body. He said, yeah, I like that. Yes, but so here's how you do it. Going this way is not gonna work, but if you want to do a one-handed spin, watch what my wrist does. I kind of, I hold onto it with a thumb, and then I pull it in, flip it over, pull it in, flip it over, and it'll stay in the middle, and it's a continuous wrist roll, and it's to the outside, meaning that your hand is turning out. And so your thumb, most likely a drish, I'll do one, is it a drish or a drish? I'll probably do one tomorrow. I'd like to hit a thousand, like I said, I've taken some, um, some of the older videos that I didn't, didn't really think fit on this channel. I've taken them off, and that's freed me up. So I'm, I'm, I'm two or three away from 1,000 videos on this channel. So I want to hit that before Christmas. No good reason. You know, ego, arrogance, or something. Maybe it's just a lucky number. Um, yeah, I mean, well, that's what, martial, that's what good martial arts is. Good martial arts, it has to be physical and mental. And people say that about self-defense all the time. I'm sure you've heard it. Self-defense is 90% mental. 
It's not. It's 90% sweating, getting stronger muscles, bruising your body when you strike, right? Learning how to defend. It's 90% physical. It's 10% mental, but the 10% is ex essential. It's extremely important, important. But people make the mistake, and this is what I think. I think it's like yoga. Yoga always says mind-body, the mind-body connection. And then people don't, don't work out as hard. Not, not all yoga, some yogis, they're killing it. But martial arts, in my mind, there's my mind, there's the mind. In my mind, martial arts is body-mind connection. So when you start to fix and exercise the body and challenge the body to grow in strength and flexibility, and you learn all new things, and you get out of your comfort zone, and you try to grow, then your mind grows too. So I like to say, yeah, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not knocking yoga. I do yoga every day. Yoga done right is really tough. And if you get the wrong yoga teacher, they can hurt you. Just like anything. When they start stepping on your, le your legs, and I don't think many people do that anymore. In the olden days, when I first started with yoga, they would come up and they'd, they'd say, you know, and they'd stretch your body out. Now, I, when I, the good ones say, move in that direction. That's good. Move in that, keep moving in that direction and you'll get there, which is brilliant. Growth mindset. That's another growth mindset. Growth mindset, can't do it yet. Yet, move in that direction and compete with yourself. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Compare yourself to yourself. Like you said, how was I yesterday? Am I a little bit better today? If you are, you're moving in the right direction. You don't have to force it. It's not, motivation's not about doing something you don't wanna do. Success means that you're willing to do the things other people don't wanna do, but that doesn't mean that you wanna do it. It's simply a discipline, but it doesn't have to be a 900 pound hammer. It has to be just this much more than yesterday. People make that mistake too. They say, I'm gonna 10X my life. I'm gonna 10X my effort, and then, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you break your hand, right? Since Amit, you start smashing the makiwara, or um, uh, in Korean it's called kyungo, which basically means drum, because of boom, boom. By the way, I had this special made makiwara, and it's in Ohio, and I gave it. I gave it to Kellen. Kellen sent me my makiwara. You don't have to, I'm just kidding. But that thing cost me a lot of money, and it was beautiful. I smashed that thing, boom, boom. But you don't do that from the first day. I finally took it out of the training area because people would use it wrong. To Sensei Emmett's point, they would start to smash too hard. Let's go behind the back and over the head before I just yak you guys to death. We're here to move, not to talk, right? Family's beautiful. How's your family? We're going to go out on the boat tonight. Down here, South Florida, all the big mega mansions along the intercoastal where... Um, What's his name? The golfer guy. Uh, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods lives and uh, I mean, you name it. You, there's, there's, there's billionaires on this, this, in this area, uh, movie stars, singers, all that stuff. All these big houses and they decorate them facing the, the water and we got the boat. My wife set up the little pontoon boat and the family, are, now we're gonna go bundle up because it's gonna be 70 degrees, which is cold for the people down here. You know, and there's some wind or something, but we're gonna go look at the, look at the uh, houses on the intercoastal, all decorated for Christmas. So I'm looking forward to it, I'm jazzed, I'm excited. How's your family? I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I hope everybody is safe and healthy. And I hope you're sweating and you have some physical soreness because you worked out so hard today or yesterday. All right, now you're gonna have it in one hand, and you're gonna go behind the back and pull it out. Behind the back and pull it out, and it's nothing more fancy than your hand turns up, and the other hand turns like that. Sort of like, let me show you again. I will gotta make sure it's in a thumb up. The other hand comes in, thumb up, pulls it out. That's it. Then over the head, and I'm trying to get, I don't have the stand today, so. You see all the junk in the corner back there. Uh, uh, yeah. You wouldn't believe it. I see more Ferrari. Right now it's season. 
I see more Ferraris in a day than you see Corvettes back home, right? You know, Corvettes, the poor man's uh, luxury car, whatever. Ferraris, Lamborghinis, uh, McLarens. They're, these McLarens, and the McLarens and Lamborghinis look so much alike, you have to wait until they go by. I, I have to wait until they go by to tell, you know, it's a square back for the, Lam the Lambo, the Lamborghinis, and they're more rounded for the, um, the McLarens. And McLaren, sports cars, and they're all worth, you know, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. And, and um, Rolls Royces and Bentleys. And by the way, I never knew this until I moved down here, but there's no comparison between a Bentley, the top line Bentley, and a Rolls Royce. In my mind, the Rolls Royce is a couple hundred thousand dollars more maybe, and, um, but you can tell the difference. You know, the Rolls Royce, the guy pulls up, or the girl, the woman, and the little, um, what do they call that, the flying spirit or whatever it is, uh, goes down, the little uh, thing on the front of the car, goes down and disappears into the, the hood of the car, a hood ornament. No one can steal their hood ornaments anymore because they go up and they come down. But they're just, I mean, there's so much money down here. And the size of the boats, and there's a boat that has, Spirit of Ecstasy, thank you. There's, a, there's one of those ships that, go, that lowers and they drive all the yachts onto it and it comes up and then they weld them down. Just arrived from Europe, so many, it's, it's amazing. And then I'm sitting here thinking, where does all this money come from? <laughs> How do these people get all this money? And, and then I think, but can they spin a staff? And it's not a comparison thing, but I'm thinking this gives me great joy. And in working with each other, that gives me great joy. And I don't need all that. Um, I, I, would, I would take it, but I'd probably try to give it away to everybody. Um, anyway, I, th this, this is my passion, right? I don't need the spirit of ecstasy. It might be fun to drive, but I've been in them. They are fun. So you're going to go over your head. And when you go over your head, you have this turning. Yeah, I know, amazing, right? Um, you turn it over like that. I went to Dan Pena's castle a few years ago as his guest. He invited me over. If you don't know who Dan Pena is, look him up, Dan Pena. Unless you're a kid. Don't look up Dan Pena if you're a kid. He's not kid-friendly. Um, and he's not supposed to be. He's for uh, business. Business and lifestyle, you know, you want to get out of your comfort zone. You want to do something hard. So this spin... If you, if you go back to this warm-up, Dan Pena, he's in Scotland, lives in a castle. It's his castle. It's got a nine-hole golf, golf course on it. It's a, he is Laird Guthrie now. It's Guthrie Castle. And uh, when, the, when the castle was first gifted to Lord Guthrie from uh, whatever his name was, the, the head of Scotland, king of Scotland at the time, he had gone to England to get William Wallace to come over and fight the Brits. Or he'd gone somewhere. He went across the, the water and he brought them back and that's, that's how that happened. Ask me that again, I missed it. Anyway, um, Dan's got Bentleys, Rolls, Rolls Royces, and uh, Ferraris parked right there at the castle. And I thought, these are nice. It'd be fun to drive in these. And I've been in, I've been in Rolls Royces, I've been... I don't think I fit in a Ferrari. So you're just going side to side. Once you go out, zip it behind the back. Bring it, I lost it there. Bring it over the head, go behind the back. This is not the right time for that. Behind the back, up, over the head, behind the back, up, over the head, and then switch. My daughter's over in the corner drumming. I just told her it wasn't the right time to drum. It gets pretty loud. All right. So back to, that's over the head, behind the back. Back to in front of the body with the finger spins. And the reason I want you to finger roll is to stretch the hands open, keep them strong, keep them healthy. This is episode four of how to bow staff train at home in case you're in super lockdown. Yeah, they are. They are. And, and here's what I, I firmly believe. And uh, even people like Dan Pena, I think, at his core, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but I'm sure he, he would rephrase it and, and, you know, maybe my phrasing's wrong. But if you just go after money, you'll never get it. And not be, be happy with it anyway. I mean, maybe you'll get it, but it's not, it, won't be, it won't be the healthiest thing for you to do. But if you follow your passion 
and not follow your passion. People make a mistake all the time, like, I really love playing video games, I'm gonna follow my passion. That's not what it means. You become passionate about things you invest your money, your time, and your energy in. It could be your church, it could be your sport, it could be your family. Your family could be your passion. You want your family to have the most amazing life possible. Uh, relationships could be your passion. Your martial arts could be your passion. So anything that you invest time, energy, focus in grows, and then you become good at it, and you like things that you're good at. It's, it's instinctive. That becomes your passion. Don't make the mistake of thinking that something that you like is your passion. Something you like is something you like. You spend all your, you put enough time, energy, and emotion into something that you like, you might find out you don't like it as much as you thought you did. It, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's fleeting. But if you invest yourself consistently in improving yourself, either your physical body, your spiritual, your spiritual life, your emotional body, then that grows and you become very passionate about it. When you start to do the right thing, be your true person and let go, stop chasing things and stop trying to force them and you start to get in the zone, right? And you start to live your best life. That's when the money comes because your authentic true self is extremely valuable. When you're trying to be somebody else, there's no value in that. You're just a copy. And you're a bad copy, you're a poor copy. And you see that all the time on places, uh, social media, all these 20 year old life coaches. And I'm not beating up on 20 year old life coaches per se, but they don't have a life yet. They haven't spent the life. They've grown up in someone else's life and they have to spend another 20, 30 years, or at least 10 years, or at least five years in something so hardcore that they become, yeah, I have classes here in person in, um, Palm Beach Gardens. Palm Beach Gardens martial arts, or quantum martial arts. There's another Palm Beach Gardens martial arts school, but my, the Palm Beach Gardens martial arts, quantum martial arts school, Palm Beach Gardens, quantum martial arts. I don't know how, how you want to say it. It's called quantum, quantum martial arts. It's a, it's a building. I've got a front door. Just uh, talked to a guy this morning, new student next week. Thank you. That's like one a month. I'm averaging for 2020. No, <laughs> half a student a month. I'll be up to... Um, nine. If the boy signs up on Monday, I'll be up to nine students. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I left the school in, in Ohio and uh, hundreds of students would come down here. Uh, hundreds of students for many years. And, and, but I, and I remember, I remember growing from zero and you got the first one and the second one. But it's not like now. It's, it's different because of COVID. This is a three finger roll. So you're going to go one, two, three, but if I count you guys, I've got thousands of students, right? And that's very exciting. Yeah, I, you have to kill me first. Literally, I've never quit. I, I'm not a quitter. Um, I might slow down a little bit. <laughs> I might get cranky and grumpy. I might get short-tempered for a minute or two until I, I, I then reconnect with my principles, my values, my passion, which is, you know, I want to be a nice person. I want to be a good person. I want to create as much value for others as I possibly can. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. I might slow down, but you've got to beat me to death to make me let go. To the thumb. There's always another way. And I was telling my little kids, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I learned from you guys. You guys learned from me. The idea that you almost always quit too soon. Now, I want you to go into a figure eight and do a wrist roll on one side and a wrist roll on the other side. So I'm gonna show you from the side. If I do the figure eight, I do a wrist roll here. When I go back to the other side and I'm gonna turn so you can see it, it's coming into a wrist roll here. It's a wrist roll over the small side of the hand, the pinky side, and a wrist roll over the thumb side, the big side of the hand. So you're doing two wrist rolls, a reverse and a forward. And that's because as the staff comes across your body, you're doing the transverse plane. You're not going to stay in that sagittal plane, which we live in. We live in front back, front back, sagittal plane. Martial arts is so brilliant because you're always crossing the center, crossing the center, which does amazing things for your brain. This is how old people become young. Young people grow up more mature with more skills. Cross body, getting out of the sagittal plane to grow, and that's the key. you got to do that. You go over the thumb and you go over the pinky, over the thumb, 
pinky, and then add your finger roll, your three finger roll. So you're gonna do uh, thumb side wrist roll. When you come back, go into your finger roll, three finger roll, back into wrist roll, finger roll. I gotta move the camera back, I'm about to, about to break it again. I put myself in a corner. Thumb roll, or wrist roll to pinky roll. And then switch hands, wrist roll, finger roll. And remember that continuous wrist roll? I want you to add that today. Do a bunch over here, out of your comfort zone. It's gonna feel different on this side. And then go back into a bunch of finger rolls and really grow, challenge yourself, like fatigue, overwork, overuse, burnout, your grip. Go back into continuous wrist roll. And if you don't remember the continuous wrist roll, the thumb is the key. And there's a little, when I bring it around, there's a little extra pop. I don't wanna say pop, because I don't want you to push your staff out of the way. But you have to slow it down and get it to this part over the back of the hand, like that. And you're, so you're gonna do that, you're gonna do that over here on the opposite side of your body. This is my right hand on my left side, and on the right side, I go into the continuous finger roll for as long as you can, and then pop it back in to your figure eight, going hand to hand, and speed it up. Start to move. If you, um, you want to grow, right? We talk about out of the comfort zone all the time. If you want to grow, increase intensity, increase complexity, or increase the amount of time that you do something. Meaning, we'll start with the, the end. If you normally do spinning from side to side, and I say do this, you're going to drop it, so pick it up. By the way, don't be afraid to drop it. Dropping is a sign that I'm increasing one of those three things, intensity, complexity, or in this case, the amount of time that I stay with a move. That's gonna really burn this out. That's out of my comfort zone. That's where I grow. And then here, I increase, I would normally do one. And now I do this for about 30 seconds before I go back to the other one. Or increase speed. Maybe you go a lot faster. I almost dropped it again. So that's a good sign. Almost dropping it or dropping it is a good sign that I am not doing what I'm comfortable with or used to. Almost hit myself in the head. That's a good sign. And then complexity, complexity. Behind the back, over the head, and then spin. Do your finger. I'm trying to dip down so you can see because the camera's so low today. I'm doing the finger roll over my head. That's more complex. Try that. Do that um, continuous Wrist roll, that's harder. Do that over your head. Go into, we did this in the last workout, go into a palm spin. A palm spin. And then drop it. I dropped it, it hit my leg. I feel that, it's not gonna kill me, it's not gonna kill you. But that's a sign that you're now growing out of your comfort zone. The only way to do that, write this down. Here's my gift. To you for 2021 only because it's helped me in my life since I started doing it yeah yes and, and you know this about graphing right I'm gonna turn off my staff oh it was already half off you grab hold of somebody they grab hold of you they grab hold of your wrist and you you they're, they're gonna arm bar you right and you you hold on to them you hold on to, if they're wearing the the gi or no gi grappling you're holding on to their skin or you're holding on to their, their hand. And if they can't open your hand, it's gonna be very hard for them to do an arm bar. If you're the same level, in other words, you're both blue belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're both white belts, you're both purple belts, or both black belts, and you have a stronger grip, they're gonna have a very hard time executing their moves against you. If you have a stronger grip, you're gonna have an easier time of winning because your grip is that much stronger. But people don't work on their grip. Why? No idea why they don't work on their grip. Let me show you one quick grip strengthener, and then I gotta go. It's my favorite. So this 
It's a 10 pound sledge hammer with the rest of it cut off. Normally it would be like this or even longer. And th this is too heavy. Don't start with 10 pounds if you haven't done it or eight pounds. Start with, um, start with a stick with some rocks tape on the end or some weights. It's called a levered weight, right? Levered, this is the lever, there's the weight. With the levered weight in your hand, you push or you go straight. It's best if your wrist or your elbow can be straight, just down and up. And then the second one, in and out. And then the third one, back and up. And this is specific to the staff. This is gonna give you more power controlling your staff. And then finally, if you can, coming around in a circle, going around in a circle. And if you have to, choke up a little bit. I'm gonna switch hands because that's burning me out. So you start to do this motion and do this motion. You're welcome. And then you really wanna get good, put it between, between your fingers and then walk your fingers down toward the weight. See if I can get this. Because you need to exercise your fingers too. Once you get all the way to the bottom, so uh, since they teach this to the grapplers, right? Get yourself a sledge and then go in the other direction. Once you get to the bottom, go back up. And uh, it's, it's exercising each digit individually and strengthening this dramatically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a, there are a million ways to do it. Or um, let me show you the other one. And this, this, this is basically what Emmett is saying. This is just, if you want to, I always say invest your, your time before you invest your money. But if you want to spend money on this, they sell these any, everywhere now online. They're very inexpensive. You put a couple of weights on the very bottom. You're welcome. I really appreciate you guys watching and being here. It makes it so much, um, you know, with, with very little income coming in from, from regular business because, yeah, same exercise, because of the um, COVID. COVID's hitting us all. And this is where I, when I go into some stores and they say, put on your mask, blah, 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 social distancing. We're all in this together. I get so frustrated because I'm thinking, you're still making money. I can't teach people in person in martial arts during a shutdown, but you can sell them bags of potato chips and beer and Coca-Cola to get more unhealthy. More people are dying from lifestyle diseases than will ever die in this pandemic. But you're gonna shut me down and McDonald's is open and Wendy's is open and Burger King is open and the Kentucky Fried Chicken See where I'm going with this? And we know that eating well, vitamin D, zinc, by the way, eat pumpkin seeds, tons of zinc. Vitamin D, pumpkin seeds, exercise is gonna keep you healthy from a disease that is only, that is only killing 99.006% of the people. And depending on your age, uh -oh, I'm gonna get banned now. I did it. I, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I keep trying to stay, stay out of the fight. But we got, we got to start fighting. They, we can't. Anyway, as soon as, if the politicians didn't get paid during the shutdown, this would be over tomorrow. Today, it would be over today. They'd find some miraculous cure or they'd start saying, you know what? We don't need trillions of dollars in vaccines because the medicines we have are saving everybody if we just give them the right medicine and the ones who are dying are, they're 79 years old anyway. Anyway, enough of that. So you go forward, let it go out, and then go backward. You can do the same thing, like uh, Sensei Emmett said, with a bow, with your staff. You can do the same thing with a towel. And then the other way, yeah, we'll do a screaming next, or uh, that, the next video we do. I gotta go do a couple things, run a couple errands, Christmas time. Merry Christmas to all and to all. I'll say Merry Kickmas. I've been saying that lately. Merry Kickmas.
to all, to all, a good night. Oh, that's how they say it, right? Happy New Year. I'm sure I'll see you before we do this, though. Before, before the beginning of the year, we got a lot more of these, unless they kick me off because I said something, because I expressed my opinion, my frustration, that they got us all shut down. The Emmett is stuck in his house instead of in his dojo, or his dojo, his dojo, teaching the way he's supposed to be and helping change the lives of so many people, everybody we come into contact with, through the gift that we got as young people, which is martial arts. The reason we're so healthy and strong, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that's what we're put on the earth for. And, th and they're, uh, they're still getting paid and we're not. And they're saying, you can go, you can go get, uh, you can buy some cigarettes, you can buy some alcohol, you can buy greasy food to stuff down your gullet, but you can't go work out. You can't do the one thing that's gonna give you a long, healthy, awesome, amazing life. Anyway, off my soapbox, you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. Please share this, please like, subscribe. If you haven't, reach out, check the links below. I'll see you guys in a little bit.